when is the best time to extract. Take a look at this radiograph. This is a four-year-old small breed dog. This is the right mandible. And you can see that there's some significant and varying degrees of bone loss adjacent to those teeth. So the question again, when uh, do we extract or when do we treat? So looking at this radiograph, if you look at that last molar on the far left, that one has no bone surrounding those roots. That is definitely an extraction. That's not a particularly critical tooth by any means. So extracting that is definitely in the best interest of this patient. On the other hand, we've got a decision to make on that first molar. You see that we've got bone loss in the furcation and we've got bone loss extending to the bone between the fourth premolar and that first molar. So if you are presented with this next week, you have to take into consideration a couple of things. Number one is if you cannot alter that and prevent the progression of it, then that's going to be an extraction. So that tooth on the left falls into that category. You can't alter that. You're not going to be able to save that tooth. It's too far gone. But this one, there's a possibility that you can. And the way that we would do that would be to go in and open up an envelope flap there, expose that bone, take our periodontal curette and scrape all of the granulation tissue out of those defects. And if you open that tissue up, anytime you see a decrease in density in the bone like that, either in that furcation between those roots or between those teeth in that defect there, there is going to be granulation tissue in that defect. And it's important to remember that because as long as that granulation tissue stays in there, that's infected tissue that is full of gram-negative anaerobes that is releasing inflammatory mediators that are destroying the bone. So if that granulation tissue remains, so does the disease process. So at the very least, we need to get that out of there. And we do that with a periodontal curette uh, using our hand instrumentation to do so. Ideally, we would also place a bone graft uh, in both of those defects. And the furcation bone there is very difficult to grow bone in. So that being said, laying out the treatment regimen, once that's completed, once we've cleaned that out, once we've got the bone graft in there, we suture between the teeth and oppose that gingiva right up where it was previously. And then the most important thing before we even think about doing that is we have to get the owner's commitment to bringing that patient back every three to six months or everything that we've just done is not going to work. It's going to break down and it will progress if the owner can't get in in that in that regimen. So if they can't do that for the rest of this patient's life, that is an extraction. So that's kind of how we have to think about that in relation to the defects that we see. If we can't prevent the progression, and many times that is when we've got severe disease like that second molar, or we can't prevent the progression if we can't get that patient back every three to six months either. So that owner needs to make that commitment or, again, that tooth needs to be extracted. So this is an actual four-month or three-month post-op on that patient. So you can see we did get some really nice bone growth in the furcation. We've got some really nice bone growth in that defect. Uh, we cannot grow bone on top of bone or toward the crown. Uh, in any defect, so that is about as good as it gets right there, guys. So that's a very pleasing outcome in this patient. And grossly, when we have this patient back, here's what we have. This is the exact same patient. You see we've extracted that first molar. There's not a lot of change on the gum margin 
until we get to that area between the teeth there, and that's where we've probed that tooth, and we're getting bleeding. Why? Because we've got granulation tissue back in that defect. So even though we've got the bone at the maximum level, when we put our periodontal probe in there, we're going to get bleeding. And that is why that patient has to come back every three, four, five, six months in order for us to maintain and remove that granulation tissue that forms in the interim so that it doesn't have a chance to progress. So this is a very good case. It's a very representative case of how we should be thinking about that in our patients on an individual, on an individual basis. basis.